Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today what we're going to cover is one of my favorites from the 41st millennium. We're going to do an ultramarine. Now ultramarines, you know, <laughs> painting them is kind of like a bolognese. Everybody's got their own recipe and you're going to like one thing or another from all of them. So choosing how you want to do your guys is kind of a personal thing, you know. I quite like doing it with a dry brush though. So I want to show you guys again how I would dry brush my ultramarines. Now I started from a base coat spray of McCrag Blue. Then after that, gave it an all over, just sort of thin down McCrag Blue, just to give me a nice smooth surface to paint from. I also make sure that anywhere that I might have missed with the base coat spray is still blue when I'm finished. After that, we're going to make a departure from the norm and we're going to go straight to Drakenhof Nightshade. Ordinarily, if you've watched any of these other videos, I like to do all the base coats first and then give the whole model one wash, but we're going to depart from that a little. We are going to go straight to Dragonoff Nightshade. After that, we're going to dry brush up with Cronus Blue and Ethereum Blue to brighten up the marine and do some sort of edging with it. Instead of doing edge highlighting, we're going to get the edges highlighted up with these dry brushes, and you'll see what I mean when we come to do that. From then on, it's all simple stuff. Lead Belcher for the metal, We'll start a skin with Bugman's Glow, Retributor Armor, we'll do his uh, Chest Eagle, any gold details on him, and then I've got here my Vallejo Black. Now, quick note on that, I like to use the Vallejo Black because it covers better than Abaddon Black from Citadel. You could use Abaddon Black quite happily, it's just going to need a couple of coats in most cases. So after that sort of tidy up stage of McCrag Blue is finished, dried, now it's time to go ahead and slap on some Drakenhof Nightshade. Now I've got here one of the medium shade brushes. I find this is quite good for this because I don't want to go crazy with it, but I do want to cover the whole model. When I say not go crazy, what I mean is on the shoulder pad here, for example, I want to be able to draw away from most of the high points, but still make sure I'm getting it into all the recesses. So just do the whole model because anywhere that you miss, like if we do sort of miss anything later on, it doesn't matter too much if you've got this sort of blue in place. It won't stand out too much. So go around now, just give all of this a quick blat with your uh, Drakenhof Nightshade, and you want to give it plenty of time to dry. I'd say about half an hour. Once that's dry, goodness me, that's dark. <laughs> now I've left that for about 40 minutes. Um, I went off, you know, just did some chores. The longer you can leave this, the better, because this next stage you know, anywhere that's still wet, we're going to pick it up and smear it everywhere. So you don't want that at all. Leave this for as long as you can. I mean, an hour would be preferable, but it doesn't really matter. Just as long as it is completely dry. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and brighten them back up a bit. We're going to dry brush, first of all, that Cronus Blue and then Ethereum Blue. Now we're going to use the two of these slightly differently. Cronus Blue, I'm going to use as sort of bringing up the whole color again. So this is going to go over the entire model, and while I don't want to leave much behind on my brush, you know, I want to sort of gradually apply this to the model, I am going to go over the whole thing with it. So shoulder pads and all. So let's start up close, and as ever, you can just dry brush the edge of your base to get a feel for what you're going to leave on the brush, you see? Nice and simple. And then just lightly begin. This will take a little bit to pick up, actually. But as you see... Backwards and forwards. And that brightens up that blue again. And we're also catching you know, these high points of detail. So what I want to do is go around the whole model, paying attention as well to any sort of flat areas. You can, instead of going against the sharp edges, like flicking up against the corner of his heel here, instead I'm going to lightly go across and get some of that texture on the whole leg. You know, and you can use that to bring up some of the color on those flatter areas, so shoulder pads, for example. But all I'm going to do now is go around, and it's worth pointing out, if you think this is going on just a little too bright, let it dry, and then see how it looks from a distance. Because it's quick to, it's quick to look quite bright going on, but I promise you want to use just a little bit more than you think at first looks good. Now with that first dry brush applied, you can see how we've brought up sort of the high points of the model while leaving that shading in the recesses. It gives us an opportunity to quickly get some of that shade, you know, the, the higher points of the model are going to look a little bit lighter. 
Now it will look a little chalky in some places, like you see across the back here, you know, it, it has gone chalky. So it's not as smooth as doing an edge highlight, but we're going to do a little something in a, you know, one of the final steps and trust me, keep the faith. Okay. So I've got here now some Ethereum blue and I've prepped my brush. This is a small dry brush. I'm going to do this slightly differently rather than going over the whole model. What I want to do is get up close. There we go. And I'm going to try and catch just the edges of parts that I want to look really bright. So along his belt, you know, along the top of his top of his pack here is probably a really good place to show this off. Get in there and just lightly flick the edges of these hard edges to the details. And you'll get then, ha ha, this real cool transition of color, which kind of fakes out that uh, edge highlighting technique. Now, like I always said, this won't look as fancy. It's not going to win you any golden demons, but this will look good on the table. Trust me. So just go around now and carefully applying this anywhere that you want to fake that nice hard edge highlight. Okay, so I'm going to do that now. Now there's that second dry brush applied. You can see I've been much more careful about where that went and I've tried to pick areas that are going to really look striking when I'm looking at the model on the table. So like I said, this is more about getting armies finished. This is not for looking, you know, <laughs> perfect in those painting competitions, but this is nice and simple stuff. And importantly, it's all about practice. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and put those base coats on the other colors. So like I said before, I've got here my lead belcher, my bugman's glow, my retributor armor, and my black. Now I'm going to skip ahead a little bit here because, you know, watering down some paint and just putting it where you want it to go is not too difficult. But why we'll stick in a couple of little tips here and there as I go. So I'm going to do most of this sort of off camera and then come back and show you some cool stuff as we go. Now here's the first sort of secret to my ultramarine bolognese. <laughs> Once you've got the uh, silver on, what I suggest is anywhere that's going to be gold, paint it silver as well. Because even with your retributor armor, which covers really well, it will cover even easier if it's just going straight over a nice smooth base coat of silver. Now we've got that gold on, we'll go ahead and start putting on the Bugman's Glow for his skin. Now, many, many moons ago, when I was working for the workshop, I was teaching a young fella how to do his own ultramarines just like this. And, you know, there was a part where he was talking about he couldn't get the face. And I'm like, what do you mean? And he was holding his model, you know, like we normally would, and he was struggling to get at the chin. And it didn't dawn on me for the longest time that it wouldn't seem necessarily obvious to just do that. So, you know, I always sort of point out, just remember that you've got a three-dimensional space to work in, and you can use that to get to even some of the more difficult to reach places, like if there's a, a chest eagle behind a bolter, you know, you're painting an ordinary tactical marine or something. Um, you know, it doesn't always come across as, as simple as someone who's been doing it for a while would think. Oops, I managed to <laughs> not show you a thing at all there. So if we look in the corner of his face here, come in from the top and you can get that base coat in. Now with Bugwin's Glow I'll probably need a second thin coat just to make sure that this is even but I'll let that dry for a few minutes and then come back and do that in the same way. And then with that done it's time to cruise around and just black in any of those areas that you want to be black. Now with all of those base coats applied it's time for a shade. I've got here Reichland Flesh Shade, and we're going to do both the skin and the gold with this. Now I've got one of the uh, medium layer brushes, or standard brush, whatever you want to call it, because I want quite a bit of control for this. So all it is, is now getting in there and just going around, making sure that we're getting all of these gold details with a little bit of this Reichland Flesh Shade. And that'll help us introduce some depth to the gold, which we can brighten up later if we fancy. Same too with the skin, let's quickly swap onto that. And you just want to bucket this in so that all those recesses are going to have this nice shading to it. Nice and simple. <laughs> it doesn't look like much now, but once it's dried, trust me, have some faith. Now while that Reichland flesh shade is drying, you can get in with some non-oil and do all of the metallic 
and the black areas. Now we'll get into some highlighting and I've got Katie and Flesh Tone here to do his skin. Now the way that these paints work is that when you lift your brush away, you're going to get a little sort of blob of color. So if I start at the top of his nose and go down, where I lift my brush away is where the paint is going to sort of naturally pull, especially if it's watered down a little more. So you can use this as a way, like if you want a particular point to have more color to it than others, start away from it and draw your paint towards that point. That's kind of a messy example there, but it holds true. So what I'm going to do is just go around and most of his skin here, I'm going to cover in with Cadian Flesh Tone. And then with that done, what we're going to do is get a little bit of Kislev Flesh and just carefully paint in areas like his brow, the tip of his nose, and anywhere on his chin that you can reach to, just to highlight where the, the very extreme edges of his face are. Now quite quick and kludgy there, but you see how easy it is to get a really quickly done face with some nice deep shading and a couple of highlights to make him pop on the table. It's not the classiest, and I have got another video up here, you can check that out on how I paint faces. But this one will do for now, and it's a nice and easy way of getting him finished. What I've got next is a little bit of Stormhost Silver, and I'm going to go around and now just edge in all of these silver details. So, easy as just picking out those areas that I really want to shine. Now I've got Liberator Gold, and I'm going to do, funnily enough, all the gold details with this. But here's a quick trick. Rather than trying to point a straight line with the very tip of my brush, I'm actually going to use the edge of it and sort of use the flatter side of the brush to catch these areas right on the edges of any detail. So his shoulder pads are a really great place to be able to do this. And just quickly do the edges of all of those using the edge of my brush. Now before I get into highlighting the black, I want to quickly show you how I'm going to do the plasma effect on his gun. Now this is quite simple. Won't look as perfect as others, but I'm going to start first of all with some Celestra Grey. Get in there and just base coat all of that plasma effect with Celestra Grey. Might take a little bit and you might need to turn them upside down or all around or what have you, but just get this covered in. Now with your medium brush and a little bit of Gilman Blue here, we're going to go ahead and shade in, or glaze in, however you want to put it, this blue. Now you could use Drakenhof Nightshade here, it'll just come out a lot darker. But if you're going to go and paint over the top of that, that's not too much of a problem. But if you have got it, Gilman Blue is the best choice for this. So as you see, just go in and get all of those areas that we base coated with Celestra Grey. Now using the same trick that I showed you with the Liberator Gold, just use the edge of your brush to go around all these hard edges Woo, that went on quite quickly. <laughs> and get this Dawnstone on your black areas. Then after the Dawnstone, just a teeny tiny bit of white on the extreme edges of this plasma gum. Now at the beginning of this, I promised there was going to be one final step that was going to bring all of this together and, you know, really make this work. And this is some of this Vallejo Matte Varnish. It actually dries with a very slight satin finish, but all I've got is a little bit of water in there just to make sure it goes on smooth. And I'm going to go around and varnish this entire miniature. Now that is going to change how light works and reflects from the model, and it's going to make that dry brushing look all the smoother. So what I'm going to do now is just go around the whole model, cover it in this matte varnish, and then let it dry. You'll see what happens. Now once it's dried, what a difference it makes. You can see how it sort of smoothed out some of those areas where it looked like things were a little bit chalky. Some places are still not perfect, but honestly, I'm still pretty pleased with how that turned out. 
Now obviously I've gone ahead and quickly uh, bashed on some material for the base here. I'm going to finish that off before I get a picture of them. But that's the basics of it done. And like I said, from here you can go ahead and add on whatever you want. Purity seals, decals, all that sort of stuff. But as a base, that is the easiest way I've ever come across, really, of painting ultramarines that look great on the table when there's a whole squad of them and they've all got their decals on. So, as ever, guys, if you found something useful, feel free to drop it in the comments down there. Any questions or anything that you might like to see next time, you know, please let me know. You can also get in touch with me on my Twitter or Facebook. They're both linked down there, too. And as ever, thank you very much for your time, guys. You enjoy the rest of your day.